Hello family, it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your January 2023 tarot scopes, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. I hope you guys are doing super fantabulous. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for holding space with us today. So let's make two announcements before we get going. Number one, if you don't follow me on Instagram, head on over. We do lives over there. It's so much fun. Plus, it's just... It's just a great way to connect. Ah, however, I will not message you and tell you that you need a reading. I will not be in your DMs. I will not be sending you um, things to send donations to me either. There's been a lot of scamming going on. Make sure that if you do follow me, it's the correct one. It's just at Ariana Luciano. It is down in the description also. So with that, I also want to make an announcement. I do have a special um, three-month video subscription where you will get a personalized um, video from me for each month talking about the astrology, what I see coming in for you, broken down just the way that we're going to do it on here, and then two questions that will be answered at the end of each video. So with that, let's talk about the astrology. What is going on upstairs? A whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot going on. However, disclaimer, I am not an astrologer. If you're looking for wonderful astrologers, you can follow Nadia Shah, Stormy Grace. One of my favorites is Astro Maggi. I love her and she's a doll, celestial astrologer, and of course, Astrology with Heather. If you have some astrologers that you really love and you want to share them and shout them out, put them out in the comments. It's, it's, it's share the love and share the light, right? So let's talk about what's going on. This is just my take on it, okay? We have Venus and Aquarius that moved in there today, January 2nd, okay? It's going to be there until the 23rd of this month. So Aquarians, you're going to be looking extra hella good, all right? What does this mean? This is about what about your friends, boo? You are ready to hang out, hang loose, cut it up, enjoy Enjoy yourself. In more committed relationships, this could signify maybe you're seeking more freedom. You want more time to be with your friends. Uh, singles, this is a lucky time for you to actually hook up with friends, um, meet a partner through friends, things like that. And Venus is going to try and um, Mars, which is retrograde and Gemini. And this means good chemistry, lots of flirting and beautiful communication. Okay. On the 6th, Full moon in Kansas, 16 degrees. 16 comes down to a seven. Seven is that celestial number connecting with the divine, okay? Cancer rules the fourth house. The fourth house is our home, family, body. This is harmonious and brings a sense of relief. Focus on what makes you feel emotionally secure, okay? On the 12th, finally, Mars goes direct eight degrees Gemini. Eight is a very powerful number. It, you lay it on the side, it's the infinity number. You know, it's the infinity sign. It's also significant of good communication, travel, things actually going in a good direction. Um, it has been retrograde since October. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes, okay, because I can't remember all this. <laughs> what have you learned? Um, what were the common things since October that kept showing up for you? You may feel your energy coming back. You're ready to tackle these goals, these New Year's resolutions, if that's what you set. But be careful that you're not going full speed ahead. And also be careful that day because Mars, you know... Mars can be a little bit rambunctious with our words and um, it also rules like the, the mechanics and stuff of driving. So be careful driving, mind your manners and no road rage that day, okay? Now, on the 18th, Mercury goes direct. Hey, 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 Mercury, guess what? Eight degrees Capricorn, okay? So what did you revisit in these last few weeks when it came to communication, when it came to themes that showed up in your life? And how can you start moving forward, okay? Now, on the 20th, happy birthday, Aquarius. Happy birthday to you. Call me, I like to go out and party, okay? The sun enters into Aquarius. It's your time to shine, big baby. Shout out to my my Aquarians, to Rita, to Jatara, and to Jeremy. Happy birthday, Boo Bears. The sun is in detriment in this sign, but that just means you're cool and collective and ready to let it all loose. This is about really connecting with people, your social um, causes, your friends, you know, and just really enjoying yourself. And I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful birthday. All right? January 
21st, new moon in Aquarius, one degree. New moon, who's this, right? We ready. We are we are initiating. We are changing. We have beautiful opportunities. This is in a sextile with Jupiter in Aries. So take the new opportunities that are, that are showing up. And remember to ground your energy during this time. January 22nd, Uranus is going to station direct 14 degrees Taurus, okay? Uranus, the planet of surprise, the great awakener, all right? In Taurus, what does Taurus rules? Taurus rules the second house. This is our resources, our food, our banking system, our money. So be ready to get some very interesting news because you never know what Uranus is going to bring, all right? Now, 14 comes down to a five, right? It's 14 degrees. There's going to be a lot of changes coming in. You're going to be hearing a lot on the news, a lot online. Just filter and remember to ground, okay? On January 26th, Venus enters into Pisces. Venus is at her exaltation there. She's like the queen on her throne. Love will be in the air, all right? Um, Pisces, you will feel that energy and you will love all of it. Okay, with that being said, we're going to jump in to our readings. I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful month and stay tuned for all the new things that are coming your way. Be blessed. Hello, fire signs, Aries. Hey, Leo. Hey, Sagittarius. How are those thighs? I have not forgotten. All right. So I hope you guys are doing super fun time. Realist. We're going to jump into your oracle read and then we're going to break it down by the signs. So I'm trying to figure out where I want to start. I want to go ahead and start with the Akashic cards here because you were the only element that got two. And I feel like you are finding yourself in karmic cycles right now, like things that are repeating themselves. I really want you to pay attention to the things that were playing out in your life for the Mercury retrograde, okay? Like what was really going on during that time? I also want you to kind of think about, what was the other thing on the, um, there's another transit. The Mercury retrograde, oh, and the Mars retrograde. What what were themes for you? What was going on? What did you feel where you were stuck at? How do you want to move forward? How can you move forward? Um, because when the karmic trenches show up, this is like a cycle that you have repeated, whether it is in business, whether it's in love, whether it's in friendships. But it's like a story that keeps repeating over and over. And it's just like time. It is time. The sands of time are going. It's time for you to change the story. It's time to change the narrative. It's time to move forward. Now, I also want to say this could deal with things in your fourth house. Your fourth house is your home, your body, you know, um, your relationships with your parents also. It's like what's happening in your home, you know. Now, the sixth house is your day-to-day -day activities. What day-to-day -day activities are getting in the way of you moving forward, of you making things happen, all right? Now, I want to move into the energy of the planet that wants to play with you today. Ain't no other but Uranus, baby, okay? The Great Awakener, the one who's coming through to shake all these things up right now. But this is like telling you, you got to think outside of the box, fire sign. There's a different way of looking at things. You need a new perspective. Unexpected changes are coming. And be open to new things. Stop repeating the same cycle. Okay? Your next um, message is from the ancestors. The ancestrals. The ancestrals. The ancestors want you to change the music. Drumming is a great way to get into deep meditation. It's also a way to clear the air. But this is about you finding your pace, your song, your way of being, clearing out and making time. It's time for you to make changes. This is a Thunderbird. Um, very much of like rising from the flames. This is you really stepping into your power, stepping into your knowledge, and stepping into knowing who you really are. You are really being awakened. Awakened to what you desire. Awakened to what needs to change. You are just starting to see things completely differently right now. The animal or insect energy that you have is no other than the spider, okay? This is the creator of prosperity, okay? You're having a lot of great ideas. You you have like a lot of things on your mind that you want to do, and maybe you should write those down. You should start initiating them and stop procrastinating because there's no more excuses once Mars goes direct, okay? And Mercury, so you've got to get into it, baby, okay? Another thing I pick up from the spider energy, I always talk about the body being the shape of eight and them having eight legs. Infinite possibilities in communication, travel, prosperity, 
and financial abundance, okay? 888 is what I like to think about with financial abundance. You are weaving your story, fire sign, okay? Trust the process. Trust what you're deciding. Oh, it's so cool. It says, march to the beat of your own heart. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, the drum is saying, let's do it. Let's go. Let's be this, okay? Let's make these choices, these decisions in order to move forward. You've got to trust yourself so that by springtime, okay, you are in a good situation, especially by March, just because it says March. But I kind of feel like with this energy, she has a lot of orange on. And so I feel like you're super creative in your sacral and you have that of amber coming in. This is ancient fossilized tree resin, okay? Great for amulets and talisman. Now, this is all about going to the deepest roots in the tallest branches, okay? And it's dripping. This amber is just dripping. And it helps balance your chakras, your solar plexus for healing purpose. At the same time, it reminds you to have patience and wisdom in order for growth. It's great for depression, mental imbalance, and feeling disconnected. Spiritually, it indicates the need to balance the healing in our life. Look at the past to shine a light on the future, which is interesting because y'all know how I feel about these butterfly cards, right? Because butterfly cards be tripping sometimes, I know. So it's just seeking and finding. So I'm going to go a little deep with this. There are some past life things that are always replaying. And if you've ever done a past life reading with me, they're super, super interesting. I absolutely love doing them. I don't promote them much, but if you're ever interested in one, hit me up and we will do it. Now, this energy of seeking and finding, there are cycles in your life that need to end, okay? And that's what the karmic trenches are telling you about. The spider spins the web of dharma. There is something that you are going to create in this lifetime. You are like the agent of change sent to your family, sent to this situation, sent for just a moment like this to break generational curses, break the cycle, and move yourself in a whole new direction. And you are looking for a way to do it, and you're looking for help. And the truth of the matter is, look at these purple flowers if you were just trust your anja if you would just ground yourself and trust your third eye that is bringing you these messages this clarity okay the clarity you would be able to move forward and break the cycle all right so that is your oracle message a little different but that's what we got now we are going to do where is it at now i'm looking for the deck i hate when i do this i think it's right here we are going to do a yes or no question, okay? With this yes or no question, I want you to, in your mind's eye, think of something super amazing that you would like a yes or no answer. We are using the guardian, the, the guardian of the night tarot. If you are curious, if you should buy this deck, go to my Instagram, there's an unboxing. These are gorgeous cards beautiful cards the book is amazing it was so insightful it is a very beautiful deck okay i recommend it and it feels great in your hands okay yes or no and here we go so two questions okay all right overall energy of what's coming in for us is strength okay look at this energy this is danger for the mouse but she's facing her danger look at her little heart look at the heart you have to have the heart to face the things that scare you so that you can have the strength to move on okay so question number one we have the five of swords with the five of swords energy i'm gonna say that is a no this is a no for me. Don't do it. It's not going to work out. You need to recalibrate. You need to change your plan. You need to make a plan, okay? That would be a no for me. I love this card so much. Okay, I just love this deck. Card number two is the Capybara. And if I'm saying it all incorrectly, please forgive me, okay? But this is like the friendliest animal in the world, okay? It's the largest rodent. But anyways, the Page of Cups, this is a yes for me. This is like... Do, 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 do. This is like super happy energy, great energy. It's going to work out. This is trusting the universe, trusting yourself. This guy is friends with alligators. Like everybody loves him. He is the sweetest guy in the world, okay? And that is you, fire sign. You got this. You're like the page of cops. Look, being guided by your ancestors, by the little red bird. And then he's carrying the little, little frog across. You 
are such a divine gift to this universe. If you were to just realize how special and how lucky we are to have you here because you are the friendliest of the of the deck, okay? So with that, let's jump into um, our general outlay and then we're gonna break it down into um, signs. Remember, these are all gonna be time stamps. I love the capybara, he's so cute. Oh my goodness, and then the, the way she writes about it in the book is adorable. I'm going to cut this deck. Seven of Pentacles with justice. So some of us are waiting for justice to be served, and we feel like it's taking forever. We're just sitting around, waiting and waiting and waiting, and nothing is happening, right? So with that energy, it's like, how do we move that Seven of Pentacles? We stop trying to wait for the karma to happen, and we move forward. You know, I often have clients who say things like, when are they going to get theirs? Girl, go! Go live your best life! Fuck them! You know, when we sit around waiting for someone's downfall, we waste our energy, we waste our time, and it's just not worth it. Go live your life and be happy, okay? Justice will eventually be served. So I got a four. We're going to lay these cards down. We have Aries. Aries, you're pulling yourself, boo. Okay, Aries. Leo. Sag. Aries, Leo, and Sag. Oh, Leo. Pull it together, boo. <laughs> All right, overall energy. The Two of Swords. There's some decisions to be made. There are some things that need to be cut off, okay? Peace restored. At the bottom of the deck, these things could have already happened, are going to happen, or are on the way, Boo Bear, okay? So, I have the star right here. This is like you're hopeful, you're excited, new year, new me. Nah, baby, all right? Just do you and be okay with it. But you are neglecting something. You are neglecting, you could also really be neglecting um, an Aquarius, Okay, you can be neglecting it, avoiding it. You don't want to deal with this or they're avoiding you. Okay, and you're like swimming, you're trying to get away. This is where Gilgamesh misses out on the total prize, the total package, because he went swimming and the snake ate the plant of life. There needs to be a focus on your foundation, your home. What's going on at home? What's happening? We've got to focus on that. All right. And then we have the Hermit energy coming in. I feel like you kind of pulled your energy back from a situation and you're trying to balance that. All right. Here you come in as the Queen of Wands. All right. Y'all know this. I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-C. Do you know what I mean? Little Boosie said it, baby. That's you. You are independent. You are holding it down, right? But the thing is, is that she's looking at temperance, right? So when I'm looking at it on the, on the here, she's looking at temperance. She's like, I got to move ahead. I can't look back. I can't keep neglecting myself. I can't keep putting myself last. She will put herself first, okay? And then here's a spirit guide. A spirit guide that's saying, look, we got to clean some things up in your heart, fire sign. You're not being very nice, okay? We got to move. We got to clear space. We got to make room for something new, okay? Let's see what we get from the Angels and Ancestors deck. Whew! She wolf, baby. All right, unleash the wild within. This is you stepping into your power, stepping into who you really are, being the queen or king of your life. No more waiting on validation or someone to tell you good job or that you're doing well. You are focused, moving forward and making things happen. And your spirit guides are right behind you because you play well with everybody. <laughs> so with that being said, let's jump into the reads. Hello, sexy Sagittarius. How are you doing, big baby? How's it? How are your thighs? How you doing, boo? I hope you're doing well. So, let's jump into this read. Okay. So, we have the Two of Swords coming in for you. Major decision, major crossroads. We're trying to make choices. And, and I want to say, read the contracts very closely. Like, I don't know if you did or not. And I'm just going to tell you this. So, my, my battery and my camera is, like, acting really crazy. And it won't let me record unless I already start recording. So, give me just a minute. I'm going to plug this in as smoothly as I can. <laughs> okay, so there's like, you've been in your head about a lot of things. You've been trying to stand your ground. You're moving forward. You're making these decisions. You're like, you're just like, look, I want to do this. This is where Gilgamesh goes and defeats the giant and he comes back with his head, right? And he's like, look, I did it. I feel like you've, you're like, look, I did it. And because I did it, 
Now I'm having financial issues and now I'm fighting something else. Now Gilgamesh is fighting the bull of heaven, you know, and this is where he loses his best friend, you know, and he's he's got to keep doing it. So it's like you keep doing these things, you keep making these choices, you keep moving ahead, but it's like damned if you do and damned if you don't kind of feeling and it's just like you're just like cut me some damn slack here like somebody give me a break somebody like let me have a damn dirty break and I feel like it's been very difficult for you to get that break okay we're going to be clarifying with the deviant moon tarot let's see what this two of arrows has for you like what is this decision I have a box around my head where the camera's trying to focus and I'm like what is what is that it was me. Three of Pentacles. There's something going on with work, something that you've been working on. Make sure you read the fine print. Here you are as the Queen of Wands. What else do we need to know? And you're a completion. I also get the number 33 by you, so I want you to pay attention to those numbers. 333. Um, 321, March 21st, might be very important for you, but I feel like the Queen of Wands is like, look, stand your ground at work and complete it. Do what you got to do so we can get the hell out of here, okay? She is not playing with nobody. The Queen of Wands. This Queen of Wands, she's got nice thighs, too. Like, I mean, I'm telling you, Sag, everybody know you got them legs, baby. You got them legs. So let's see here. She got her spear, too. She's not playing with nobody. Overall, what is this decision about? Man, this card's been popular. The Magician in the Mirror, communication, moving forward, really making things happen, okay? Really letting people know, hey, hey, do you want to know what's going to happen? Fuck around and find out. Like, Sagittarius is not playing with nobody today, okay? And I feel like as the Queen of Wands, you are completing everything that needs to be done. You are moving ahead. There's a project at work you need to pay lots of attention to. Okay, Nine of Wands. What's coming in for this Nine of Wands energy? Oh, wait. Pick a card. My bad. So, let's see here. Pick a card. What do we have here? What do we have here? I'm going to take from the top, and I'm going to take from the bottom. So, Nine of Wands, card number one, or card number two. So, if you are going to see what's behind card number one, you have the caring connection, right? So, you are very focused on finding that connection, finding friends, making sure things are good, um, this is also an energy of like taking time to smell the flowers, right? Smell the roses, enjoying life, being happy, okay? Now, Ten of Pentacles, heavy decision, completion, again. But look, I always point this out. Look how they're like playing on the back of this poor guy, right? This is not nice. It's not nice. Nine of Pentacles, there is a trip. The Ten of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and kind of confused about it. Like, there's also confusion over a move, whether it was your move or someone else's move. Like, we're kind of confused about this move still. We're trying to figure out family situations, wondering, should I have done it by myself? But we have a caring connection, and if you walk away, then are you being an asshole? It's like really weird energy going on. It's like, you want to be a part of this family, you want to do this caring connection, but you miss being on your nine of pentacles. You miss rolling around solo dojo sometimes. Give me some idea of what this Ten of Pentacles is about. Your pride. Your pride might be getting in the way. The 19th might be important because I have the 10 and the 9 and then the 19. Something is drawing you out. Your pride, your ego. And um, I feel like this is your wake-up call. I feel like it's your wake-up call. Like you need to wake up. You need to smell the coffee before you get stuck in this situation where you don't know your you can't you don't know you're up from your down. Okay, like you don't even know how you're gonna move forward. You don't know what's going on. There's like this sense of panic and confusion. It's kind of not fair. Okay, it's not fair for you to feel that way. But this has to do with a move. Oh, hold on, my leg is hurting. There we go. Okay. So, we're cutting something out. We have the sky for the sickle. Socially. Okay. Something about social life. You're, you're looking at somebody's social life, wondering if you can fit in, wondering if they fit in. There's also something about social media. Okay. Be very careful trying to go through people's social media. Come on, guys. You know... I, 
had told my daughter something about social media um, because, you know, they were doing some weird stuff. And I was like, bro, if you're like, come on, boo, like, you, you said you're going to trust them. Why are you doing that? Like, the moment you feel that you have to start looking through people's stuff and the moment that you feel that, sit with it. Is it coming from your insecurities or is there a reason for it? And if there's a reason for it, then that should be a discussion. We don't have to be private eye investigators, okay? Although it's fun. I mean, I've been there. It's just not the way to live your life, okay? It gets old. So I have that this is a caring con uh, connection, you know, but our pride and our egos are drawing up the way that we, we're, this is your wake up call, like before somebody goes and cuts you off socially, you better pull it together, Sagittarius, or you're going to miss out on a very caring relationship or them with you. Now we have here the blossoming abundance with the next card number two. And I feel like you are like really trying to hold on to your abundance, really focus on your money, making sure that everything is working out the way that you want it to work out, right? I have the moon here. There's something else about a move to another house. And there's conflict. Sagittarius, you have the moon by the nine of wands. I want to say midnight move. <laughs> like, this was like, you never had a midnight move? Okay, I lived in the hood and I learned what the midnight move was. This guy was like, okay, we're going to midnight move you out of here. Ain't no one going to know. I was like, what is a midnight move? And he was like, girl, you're not paying rent. We leaving. I was like, sir, that is wrong. <laughs> no, he helped me move out. I was in a really bad area and I had to get out. And, you know, I already had a new place. And I told him he was my neighbor. And he was like, I'm going to get you out of here, girl. I was like, all right. For me, this is like a midnight move or a very quick move. It's affected your abundance. It's making you feel a little conflicted, like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have done it, right? Let's look at the moon real quick by the abundance. There's some strings. You know, you could pull some strings. We got the lilies, the whip, and the gentleman. So I feel like, oh, we just really got to focus on what it is that we truly want, okay? Okay. This move is freeing up space, it's making us happy, but we're in conflict, and I feel like there were strings attached to this move, okay? And it's like a little uncomfortable. So overall, Nine of Wands, what do you have for us? What do you have for our beautiful Sagittarius? Seven of Pentacles, you're like, ah, you're like trying to figure out how do I get blood out of a turnip? You know, how do I make this bill happen? How do I make that happen? There's a lot of financial stress going on here. You know, but Seven of Pentacles, making you feel like we're going into the Five of Pentacles. Feeling a little bit financially drained. Also, watch your words because you could lose friends because you're financially stressed. I have the High Priestess coming through. And it's interesting the High Priestess comes out because that's who he yells at. That's who he yells at and he throws the hind leg of the bull at her and that's why he... His best friend dies. But anyways, that's two different decks. But I'm just saying, very interesting that it showed up. The Eight of Pentacles. There's so, Watch your temper at work, especially on the 8th when Mars goes direct. Okay, Sagittarius? Because you know, you be sly with your mouth sometimes. You got a very slick mouth, boo. And you need to, ta you need to take it a little easy on people, okay? We, we ain't all ready for that conversation you have. Did I get a little on my face? Okay. And there is the King of Cups. So you could be dealing with a Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy. Watch your words. There's something about you needing to watch your words. And like, if you can work overtime or if there's hours that you can work, that might be something to come up, especially around the full moon because there's a full moon behind him. So let's ask the King of Cups. Like, what's up, King of Cups? What are we doing? What are you doing over here in this read? What you got? We got a black. <laughs> it's a black and I said the 21st, right? It says 21 right there. Pay attention on the 21st, okay? Something is ending. And you're going to feel better and more secure. Okay, so there's something going on that's coming to an end that's going to make you feel more secure. There's an offer coming in, whether it's coming from a, the King of Cups or you're the King of Cups. There's a block that is over and you're getting grounded. If they're offering overtime, I don't know what I want to tell somebody this. Go do the overtime. Go, go make you some money, okay? High Priestess, what do you have for Sagittarius? The Uber. Safe space. Are you sitting in your car? 
like, are you, because you, you, you're heartbroken? Okay, I feel like when the high priestess is showing up, it's like you kind of feel like something's going to happen, right? You just kind of feel it. You don't know why you're feeling this, but you do. And so you're just kind of like driving around, waiting for something to happen. Pay attention to the 20th and the 24th, okay? It's going to be important. I also want to say if there is a situation where you do not want to get in the car with somebody, do not get in the car with them, okay? Don't do it, all right? Let's look at an oracle card. Let's see what we got with this oracle over here. Be in the here and now, 32, okay? Number five. The high priestess doesn't want you to think too far ahead, too far in the past. They want you to be right here, right now. If your heart is broken, they want you to feel it. They want you to go through the motions to repair it. Whatever's been blocking you is about to be removed. Just enjoy it, okay? Just enjoy it and go for the ride. Interesting. Four of Cups. Why are we at the Four of Cups with Sagittarius? Because Empress Energy, okay? So we have the High Priestess, then we have the Empress. Hmm, interesting. Then we have a decision, Two of Swords. The Knight of Wands. Overall, what do we have? We don't want to talk to them. Okay, so we have a decision. We have to make a decision. Maybe there was someone in the past that really hurt us. Maybe um, you're dealing with someone highly psychic. But there is this energy of the Empress, a major decision, the Knight of Wands. Makes me think of a, a mother-child situation, a father-child situation, and feeling torn and broken in half. You have the Two of Swords at the beginning, and then you have the Two of Swords again now. Now, the Knight of Wands, I'm telling you, don't be slick with the tongue because communication is coming. Okay, right behind that communication was the Queen of Cups. So this is like an emotionally tied couple. You guys are emotionally together. You guys are talking. Things are happening. This could be in a company. But there's information that's coming through, and you need to be prepared to receive whatever it is that they have to say. So what is the guidance with this Two of Swords? Communication. There's a letter. I told you communication is coming through. Financials. Something about money and a major decision at the crossroads is going to have to be made. Okay, if I were the Knight of Wands, okay, if the Knight of Wands could talk to me, what would the Knight of Wands say? Because he's going into this, he don't give a damn dirty... By the summertime, things are going to be okay. There's also this energy of a new family, a new connection, a new way of being. Think about whatever it is that you want right now, okay? And if you could just wait till the summertime... You could have it. I know it feels like forever away, but if you could wait around July or August, it's coming your way. Very interesting energy, okay? There's a lot of big things coming in, but it's almost like your pride or your ego is keeping you from asking for help. You need to learn to ask for help. There's also something about finances that's very important for you so that you can move forward. Let's close out this read with one more oracle. Sorry, my neighbors are loud. One more oracle. You have a new life waiting for you. Do not wait for anything else and take a chance. Come to the edge. Come on, don't be afraid. Go for it. You know what? It didn't work out in the past with, with that job or it didn't work out in the past with that person, but that's not who you're with now and that's not the job you're at today. So what does that have to say to you? This is a window of opportunity to make things happen, okay? Mars is going direct, okay? Jupiter is in Aries. So many benefic things can happen to people who want to take the action. Look at where Aries falls in your chart okay look at where that jupiterian energy is going to hit is it going to hit your fourth house because there's a lot of benefits that are going to hit there it's a benefic fam uh energy right it could bless your home your house could increase your family could increase you have to start paying attention to where these energies fall so that it's not like telling you your future but it's telling you guidance that you need sagittarius because right now like the way i feel when i'm doing your read is like you're just doing everything. You know, you're just trying to do everything. And the universe is like, look, man, I'm trying to send you some help. But you like keep saying you could do it yourself. You know, like what's wrong with you? Let's see here. Closing out this read with your new life and your happiness. Have a little bit of faith, my love. Have some faith. Raise your vibration. How do you raise your vibration? First of all, you know, this is something so easy. Put on a song you like. Put some music on that you like. 
okay that's positive that makes you feel good start cleaning move things out that don't belong there anymore put some fresh flowers up spray some smell good in get rid of the trash get rid of the broken things clean your closet out Go do something nice for somebody. Call up a friend. Take them to lunch. Take yourself to lunch. Get your toes done. Do something that makes you happy. Do something that makes someone else happy. That's how you raise your vibration. Okay? Now, you can always go the spiritual route. You can put the Reiki music on. You can light a candle. You can clear your energy. You can do all those things. But there's simple things that you could do every day to make yourself happy. Why are you not doing them? Become a clear channel. Start learning to just accept the messages as they come from the divine. And this is your wake-up call. Okay? Put that pride and the ego to the side before you get your living situation messed up with. Okay? Let's look at your financial situation. Sagittarius. Whew, we've got... A new beginning in the spring. We're signing contracts. Something new and beautiful. However, look, we are at a crossroads. We have to make a decision. Are we going to take it? Are we not? It does require some training. You might be learning about stocks, bonds, trades, things like that. Or you might be learning new things at work. And it's a good thing to do. Look, it brings an offer. I have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups. That's a contract for me, okay? Brand new beginning. If you learn a new skill, boo, you're going to have a new beginning. How about that? Trust your intuition. You have the high priestess again. Overall energy financially. Again, the two of swords. So I just feel like financially it's a major decision that you have to take to get the control back so that you can get yourself on task. Okay? On track, as they say. Let's look at your love life, Boo Bear. Let's look at your love life. Let's see what we got going on in our beautiful love life for Sagittarius. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus, if you're listening for love. Okay. Woo! Woo! What's going on? Okay. King of Pentacles came out. We have the Four of Swords. We're taking, we, need, we need a break. <laughs> Sagittarius is like, whoo! I need a break, Okay. I'm going to go take care of myself. I need some alone time. I don't want any of this time. All right. Let's see what else we got going on here. The magician. We're trying to manifest something. We're trying to create. We're releasing the overworking. Working too hard to make a relationship work. Working and working and pushing and pushing when we need to let go. Okay. And we're walking away from something, Sagittarius. I am not telling you that you're leaving your partner. So please do not put those words in my mouth. You're walking away from something. Overall, Queen of Swords energy. I feel like Sagittarius, you like to like say things. Your words can be very cutting sometimes. But I feel like your heart's been locked up for a while. Like you've kind of like put your heart up. You see a little cup of love over there. You're looking at the ocean. You're looking at your emotions. And you're waiting for that moment of love to come in, right? And I think you've already had that moment. But you're just kind of afraid, so this King of Pentacles that's coming in, I feel like this is the energy of you really being focused on what is going to financially support me in this life, what is going to make me feel safe and secure, okay, but also bring in the magic, okay, make me feel wanted, make me feel desired, passion is important, okay, for a sword, your heart, it, look, I want you to look at this, like, you're getting over a situation where your heart was on your sleeve, or you had put your heart out there, and it just didn't work out, right? We're getting over that. We're moving forward from that. The Seven of Swords, miscommunication, somebody was lying. The Magician is coming in. The Magician is trying to clean that up, okay, with the Seven of Cups. I told you seven, someone was lying. I had two more cards fall out with it. Here is the Emperor energy. And then the King of Cups. So I just kind of feel like you're trying to release an energy of someone who's just always watching. And, and maybe it was just a physical relationship. They lied to you. Um, they led you on, male or female. But then this energy right here is what you're longing for. This is what you want is to be kind of caressed and loved, given an opportunity. So why are we releasing the Three of Pentacles? I feel like we're releasing a third party. We're releasing someone who has a third party, even though this is the lovers. Um, this is releasing the energy of overworking a situation or overworking. The Eight of Cups coming through here. What do we have here? Eight of Cups says, 
in order for transformation to happen, you have to walk away from the old you and embrace the new you. What is your view on love? How do you want it to change? Okay. Queen of Swords is coming in for you. And the Queen of Swords is telling you the Five of Wands. You are a little conflicted because you are coming from your logical mind. Okay? You're afraid that someone's going to move on. Someone's going to be happier with someone else. And I'm going to tell you what is for you cannot be taken. And what is not for you will always be taken. Okay? You know, I just feel like sometimes we're so wanting to control the situation. We want this person to be ours. We want this. We want that. That we kind of lose sight about... Maybe it's not so much getting what we want, but getting what the creator wants us to have, getting what the universe wants to bring forth to us. You do have quite a bit of fives that I'm looking at, especially when it comes to relationships. And I do think that there needs to be something cut off at work. OK, either you're working too much or someone's flirting with you at work and you're in a relationship. We need to, we need to make that stop. OK, you don't have to be an asshole. You just need to set some clear boundaries. All right. So we have the community card coming in for you. So I feel like it's important to go out with friends. A major victory in love coming in for you. We have you focused on your money, baby. You're focused on your money. You're trusting your intuition. It's very important for you. We're getting rid of attachments. Attachments to, okay, old lovers, old friends that are not benefiting us right now. Okay, there is some deceitful attachments that we have going on and we've got to change that because it's causing a hostile hostile work environment in the home okay or in the relationship and be aware that there is a lot of envy around your relationship Sagittarius damn I mean it was sounding so pretty and then damn like everybody's hating on you Sag so please pay attention to this energy like if you're in a relationship be sure that you're you're handling yourself in a way that people know that you're off the market also, um, you know, I'm always all up for a little bit of harmless flirting and there's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, be aware that sometimes those are some things that cross boundaries for your partner, that you have an envious energy that wants you and your new partner to break up if you're in a relationship. There's also this energy of people just around you that just don't want to see you happy when you need are also focusing on your coin, focus on work. Be aware that there is deceitful energy around you and envious energy. I know, Sad, you got like the sexiest thighs too. Like, look at you. You have to like fight me all, you know, but it's okay. You're going to get it together, Sag. This is getting better. You know, a lot of the family issues seem to be going away. I remember your reads a lot for the first time because I, I listen to them after I do them. So, be blessed. If you're interested in getting one of these monthly reads just like this, personalized just for you, I have a three-month subscription where you get one delivered to you every month through email, well, through YouTube to your email. And then what happens is you can also add two major questions that you have, all right? And then I answer them at the end if it doesn't come out in the read. So, with that, hit my link tree, come hang out with me, go to Instagram, let's be friends, all right? And have a beautiful month. Happy New Year.